Hey, welcome back. So in this session, I want to take you through the basic concepts related to building mobile and establish some common taxonomy between what is a responsive app, what is a progressive web app, PWA, what is a hybrid app, and what is a native app. I feel like there's a lot of confusion currently in the bubble ecosystem with these terminologies. And in today's session, I want to take some time and establish a common definition of what is what so we can avoid confusion later on in the course. So one way we can look at these four concepts is on a scale from platform independent to native. So what do I mean by platform independent? Platform independent basically means that something is not specifically developed for any sort of platform or operating system. So I don't develop something specifically for iOS or Android, but I develop an application that can run on any of these platforms. On the other hand, native is platform dependent. So if I develop a native app, I develop it for iOS specifically, or I develop it for Android specifically, or I develop it for Mac or Windows or whatever. So on the upper end of the spectrum, there are responsive web apps, which is basically just websites. Then we have progressive web apps, then hybrid apps, and at the end we have native apps. Let's go through all of these a bit more in detail. So what is a responsive web app? As said, a responsive web app is basically just a website or a web application that is designed to be responsive on any device, so on a desktop as well as on a tablet or a mobile phone. It's typically accessed through a browser. And a good example is twitter.com. Let's do this right here. Okay, so we're on the Twitter homepage. That's a web application. But the interesting thing is if we go and view it on a mobile sized screen, we see that it adjusts. And this is what a responsive web application is. I can also actually look at it on my mobile phone. So this is a uh, software mirroring my actual phone that I'm holding in my hand right now. So I can go on twitter.com, open this, and we basically see the same thing as here accessed through Chrome on my desktop. The next thing that we have is a so-called progressive web app. And this term might be super confusing if we just Google the definition of that. Google tells us a progressive web app, PWA, is a website that looks and behaves as if it's a mobile app. PWAs are built to take advantage of native mobile device features without requiring the end user to visit an app store, make a purchase and download the software locally. Okay, this gives us some first hints of what a PWA is. Let's look into it in a less abstract way. So a PWA is basically a website that behaves like a native app. On modern Android and iOS devices, I can install it to my home screen via the web browser, and then it will be indistinguishable or almost indistinguishable from a native application. PWAs can have some offline capability via caching, but this is usually limited because we cannot access the server backend or any database that's remote. PWAs can make use of push messages. However, that's currently limited to Android because Apple is quite restrictive when it comes to the rights they give PWAs on their platform. There are some other native features uh, that can be accessed, but again, this is heavily platform dependent and on iOS, it's quite restrictive. We can take payments on PWAs via Stripe or any other third party service but we don't have to take payments via Google Pay or Apple Pay. So we can again use Twitter for an example of this. So if I go to Safari, I go to the Twitter website, so that's just twitter.com. I can click on this share icon and then say add to home screen, just call it Twitter PWA, add this to my home screen. I can open it here and we see it behaves like a normal app. It's full screen and it's basically, at least if you're not keen on the UX details, indistinguishable from a actual native app. The next concept I want to look at is hybrid apps. So what are hybrid apps? Hybrid apps are basically web apps that have been put into a native shell using a web view. So what does that mean? A hybrid app in essence is a website that is rendered in a browser 
which is part of an app. So instead of going to Safari and opening a website, I'm installing another app that inside of it has a browser, which in development terminology is called a web view, which always opens this one website, which could be twitter.com, for example, and also has some ability to tap into native functions. So don't worry, we will look into this in much more detail later again. Some key characteristics of hybrid apps are that they can be downloaded from the App Store because, again, we're taking a website and rendering it in a native app, and this is then submitted to the App Store, and it also can access different native features. It can have access to in-app payments, push messages, and so on. So in terms of UX and access to native features, it comes pretty close to a native app, but it's still mostly a web-based application. So what are good examples of this? This is actually super interesting. There are many more hybrid apps than you would think. So for example, if you download Twitter or Instagram from the App Store, these are not real native apps, so they're not developed in Swift. They're developed in normal web-based technology and have some added native capabilities. There are quite interesting articles on this if you Google a bit. But for example, Instagram, Discord, Twitter, they're all hybrid apps. Okay, let's go to the last concept, native apps. These are platform dependent, so they're specifically developed for either iOS or Android using their respective native programming languages. They have full access to native features, and some good examples of this is, for example, Spotify or WhatsApp, which are also downloaded from the App Store. Okay, so now that we have gone through each of these concepts on a high level, let's quickly go through all of them again and compare them across different dimensions. So first, let's look into the tech stack. Web applications are built using a normal web stack, which is usually HTML, CSS, and some form of JavaScript. Progressive web apps use the same web technology stack, plus they use some additional JavaScript components in order to access some of the native features that they need, for example, the splash screen that you see when you start them up, or push messages, etc. Hybrid apps, again, use a basic web stack, so again, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, plus a native shell. So again, hybrid apps are web applications which are rendered in a web view in a otherwise more or less empty native app. So what we do is we take an app shell which is developed on Swift or Objective-C or Java, add a web view in it and load our web page. So that's the tech stack for hybrid apps. And then we have native apps, which are specifically developed for iOS or Android using Swift or prior to this Objective-C for iOS or Java or Kotlin for Android. How do we install these? So web applications are not installed. We just go to a specific website using a URL. A progressive web app is installed from the browser via the add to home screen functions. Hybrid apps as well as native apps are installed using the app stores, so the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. One important aspect of how these concepts differ is how we as the developers can update the applications. So in a web app, we can update our code bases and push the changes to our server and all the changes will be available immediately to the end users. The same goes for a progressive web app. Updates that we push to our server are available immediately to the end user. And the same goes with hybrid apps. If we update our web components, so let's assume we build a hybrid app using Bubble and some sort of native shell from a third-party service. If we update our Bubble side of the app, all changes, again, are pushed immediately to the end user, which is a huge advantage compared to native app, which require resubmission and reapproval every time you change as much as a single word in your code. And this can take several days to weeks each time that you need to do that. So huge advantage for hybrid apps because you can push multiple updates a day without any wait time. 
Let's quickly look into offline capabilities. Web applications don't offer any offline capabilities. PWA offers some offline capability via caching, which is basically a form of downloading a website and running it locally. But it's important to note here that we don't have access to our backend. So if we use a bubble application as progressive web app and somebody installs this on their home screen, the moment they don't have internet, they won't be able to access your database, for example, or any kind of workflows that run in the backend or no third-party APIs, etc. So it is very limited in some sense. The same goes for a hybrid app, since we're still rendering a website, anything that's on the server won't be accessible for us. In a native app, we can, in theory, build a full app that runs offline, but most modern apps will make use of third-party databases, have social features, have content that we stream, so we can't do any of this. We can, for example, develop a game that runs locally, this works fine, but as soon as we need data that's stored somewhere on the web, like social feeds, etc., that this won't work, even with native apps. Push notifications, another very important features. Web apps don't offer this on mobile phones. Progressive web apps do on Android only. iOS currently doesn't allow us to send push notifications from a progressive web app to a phone. This might be subject to change in the future, but for now it is July 2022 that doesn't work. Hybrid apps, we can use full push capability for Android and iOS and the same, of course, for native apps. When it comes to payments on web applications, we can take payments using Stripe or some other payment uh, service. The same goes for progressive web apps. We can use any payment software that we want, so Stripe, PayPal, etc. On hybrid apps, if we ship them in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store, Google and or Apple will require us to use their own payment services for in-app purchases, so Apple Pay or Google Pay. And the same goes for native apps. Unfortunately, these that take quite sizable commissions, around 30%, you can get an exemption if you're a startup for 15% for some time, but they won't be allowing you to use Stripe or even uh, pay on the website if most of the features that you enable with the in-app purchase happens on the phone. If you're interested, Google that. There's a whole bunch of lawsuits between Apple and Spotify and some other providers. Uh, and last but not least, native features. So can we access native features from web applications? Yes, some, but it's very limited. For example, we can trigger a share request for PWAs. It's less limited, so we can do certain things, as said, like push notifications. We can access some other native features, but iOS is better restricted. On hybrid apps, we have full access because, again, the native app shell can contain all sorts of native features and then give data back to the web application, so full access. And, of course, for native apps, we also have full access to all kinds of native features that we want. Okay, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'm going to see you in the next session.